Hello and welcome to Caring, the programme that aims to give a voice to the voiceless. This week we bring you something special from the tropical forests in Central Africa, a report on the plight of the pygmies. Miniature in stature as they are in status, adult males measuring less than five foot, a legendary people steeped in mysticism, but today their plight remains very real. Considered by some to have magical powers, others to be cursed, pygmies throughout the years have sadly evolved very little. They continue to linger miserably on the lowest rung of the social ladder. No land, no skills, no rights, often reduced to a life of servitude by the bigger, stronger tribal peers, beaten, starved, even eaten. Yet campaigners, it seems, remain powerless to help. Our reporters, Arno Zeitman and Malin Rabel, travelled to meet this reclusive and fascinating people and hear their heartbreaking tales. Malika! The central African rainforest is home to the pygmy, or batwa, as they're known in their local language. They're the oldest people in the world. Women hunt using traditional methods, such as nets and traps. But the catches are getting less frequent. The pygmies are no longer alone in the forest. Before, we used to be alone in the forest, but now the Bantus come to collect leaves and wood to build their houses with or to build fires with. This scares the animals that we're trying to hunt. Moreover, when they come across us, they force us to work for them and also beat us. The members of the largest ethnic group, the Bantu, are the main cause of deforestation in Central Africa as they raid the forest for wood. The pygmies are taken from their home to work for the Bantu. Their monthly wage is a piece of cloth and a few bottles of lemonade if they're lucky. The pygmy children don't go to school. Instead, they're put to work cleaning up a field. Come here. This part is to be cleaned up. Come on. You lady, come on, do it here. This is a hard job, but we have no tools or land of our own, so we have to work for the Bantus. This is the way it is. Are the wages good? No, the payment is ridiculous. We work hard for a small salary. So what do you say in response to this? Well, leave it to me. I know what I have to do to protect her. It's my business. Since I came here, I have never seen a Bantu who would do such work. That's why I'm using women and children. Pygmies. But for the Bantu, the work is just too hard. Too hard. It's too hard. Pygmies were once nomads, but now most of them have settled near Bantu villages. The Bantu remain the only landowners, however. We are working together with pygmies, with children. We pay them with pieces of clothes, clothes and food. Anything that we find, we give them as payment. Do you sometimes whip them? Yes, we whip them. If they do something wrong, we whip them.
Another threat to the forest and those who rely on it is the exploitation of palm oil. Here, palm trees have been planted on more than 3,000 hectares. The palm nuts are processed and the oil extracted at a local plant owned by British group Unilever. 250 tons of oil is produced each month. Palm oil is part of the basic food in the Congo, but it's also a key product used in the cosmetic industry of Europe and the West. At the plant, the manual works carried out by pygmies. Only one holds a position of responsibility within the plant, and that's Afumi, the accountant. The real problem is the lack of schooling. Those who study can hope for a change, but those who don't or can't attend school can't hope for change. That person will always be doing a hard job and not be able to even manage his own money. The pygmies, or batwa, are indeed enduring hard labor. For the equivalent of around 50 euros a month, they spend hours laboring in the heat. These are the ones who have abandoned their traditional lifestyle in search of paid work in the few factories in the area. But here again, just as in the Bantu villages, they're working under the control of the Bantu. Their wages are insufficient for them to afford adequate food or health care for their families. Today, Ifumi is burying his nephew. Here in Boteca, many children die. Malaria is often the cause. But for us pygmies, most children die of malnutrition because we don't have enough money to buy food. That's why many children and babies die here in Boteca because they don't have enough to eat. Mukini died before his third birthday. According to UNICEF, one in three pygmy children dies before the age of five. The Congo River is the highway of the area. Its tributaries provide a route to export the riches of the forest. It also allows the 200,000 pygmies to travel freely across Central Africa, despite the borders set up by colonial rule. In the south of the Central African Republic, Beninga is a tracker. Here, pygmies are employed by an environmental organization to protect elephants and gorillas against poachers. Because it's a well-paid job, Beninga and members of his community, known here as the Aka, are able to buy goods from a local town. Unfortunately, the Aka spend most of their money on alcohol. This is a mourning ceremony. <laughs> this pygmy chief died of liver failure. He was just 40 years old and the eldest of his community. Texts 
dating back 5,000 years speak of the pygmies, but the legends carried to us by the poets of ancient Greece describe them as subhuman. Today, the forest is no longer a safe haven for the pygmies as they come into contact with members of other tribes. But one of the most difficult challenges which lies ahead is for them to be considered as equal members of the human race. Well, our thanks again to reporters Arnold Zeidman and Marlene Rabel for filming these incredible and rare images. That wraps up this edition of Caring Then. Don't forget, you can see that report again and other programmes on our website, www.fransvenquette.com. Click on the link marked Special Reports. Join us again very soon. Until then, thank you for watching.